Hello, I'm Julian. And I'm Ashley. And we're obviously married. But not to each other, thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully, and we obviously look for different things in a spouse, but we also like different things in a car. Like this Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron behind me. It's fast, it's kind of sleek, it's pretty sophisticated. So I think it's a really interesting car for a guy like me. Well, if me had more money. I feel really, really sad for you, you know. Because this is already Audi's smallest, most affordable electric vehicle in the market. Now, is it practical? Is it nice to drive? Is the boot spacious enough for my daily errands? Those are things I want to find out as a mother of two. So we have one car and two opinions, so stick around. Let's, Let's check, check out, out the Audi Q4 Sportback, Sportback e-tron together. together. <laughs> Okay, Ash, so you went for the launch, right, of this thing? Were you paying attention? I guess so. <laughs> okay, so what do we have for Singapore? So in Singapore, we have got two models of the Q4 e-tron. Basically, the e-tron as well as the Sportback e-tron. And it comes in two variants. We have the Edition 1 as well as the Advanced. Oh, okay, so four versions of the Q4 all together. That's right. So what do we have here today? So today we have with us the Q4 Sportback e-tron Advanced. So just to be clear, the Q4 e-tron is like an SUV, right? And the Q4 Sportback e-tron is like a coupe SUV. That's right. So but think about it as both cars are rear-wheel drive. They deliver the same horsepower, the same torque. So it's basically one car in two different bodies. Ah, okay. Right, and pricing? So the e-tron starts at 254999 and the Sportback e-tron goes for 259999 And if you like the Edition 1, that's available at a top-up of 20000 Okay, so 5K more for a bit more style and 20K more for even more style. That's right. <laughs> okay, but you know what? Whatever version it is, right, you can tell straight away that this is an electric car, I think. I mean, have a look at this grill, right? It's completely closed off. It's a panel, not a grill. And, you know, that tells me that you don't have a big combustion engine here that needs a lot of cooling, right? And also, this bonnet, check out how short it is. It's another signal that, you know, motors are small, engines are big. It's just, just another sign that it's electric. And these headlights are kind of futuristic, aren't they? Yeah, so these are standard on the Advance. And on the Edition 1, they come with the Matrix headlights. Ah, okay. So, okay, yeah, but, you know, you have to spend 20k. I hope you get a bit more than headlights for 20k. Yeah, so you get the Matrix headlights, you get a rear light bar, you get a head-up display, you get S-line trim, and bigger ribs. Ah, okay. So a lot of nice cosmetic stuff, so at least your friends can see where you spent the money. Yep. Okay, well, let's have a look at the side of the car. Let's see what I can find out. Ooh, okay, look at those wheels. Those are like 19 inches. So let me guess, on the Edition 1, you get 20 inches. Actually, you get 21-inch wheels on the Edition 1. Ah, okay. I thought like you pay 20k more, you get 20-inch wheels. But let's call it a bonus inch. And, you know, we could all use an extra inch. Um, you know, when I stand at the side of the car, I can kind of tell a little bit that it's also an EV from the proportions because it's got a very long wheelbase and very short overhang. So definitely built on like an EV platform, right? But what I find surprising is that, you know, it doesn't have that flush door handle that you know, a lot of EVs have, you know, it's got these. Yeah, it's, and it seems like none of the e-trons come with the flush handle. So maybe it could just be an Audi thing. Okay, yeah, so maybe it's an Audi thing. But I can see what you mean by Sportback being sporty because I love the way this line sort of tapers towards the tail of the car and I really got to check out the back. Oh, this is cool, man. Check it out. So it's not boxy at all. It's curvy and it really catches the eye because you know, you've got this screen here and then you've got a tail spoiler, but also another piece of glass here, like so two screens. That's kind of cool. Hey, what do you think of the styling though? So personally, I definitely prefer the Sportback version. It's coupe-like, it's sportier. It definitely suits my personality more. Oh, you have a sporty personality. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> ultimately, it's built upon the same platform like the Volkswagen ID.5 as okay. well as the Skoda Enyaq Coupe. But ultimately, this one definitely screams more premium and more Audi. Okay, so those are like sister cars, right? They have the same platform, same battery, same motor. Same company. Okay, but I totally agree with you though. You look at this car and it does look like an Audi. But that's on the outside. How about the inside? Let's go have a look.
you know, Ash, even if I didn't have an Audi badge here, I think I would just sit inside here and know straight away I was inside an Audi. So I've got this Audi virtual cockpit here, we're very familiar with, so you know, I can do what I like with it, stuff like that. And then you've got the Audi MMI system. Again, they haven't changed it around so much, so something that I'm very familiar with. And oh, let me show you something actually, the navigation system is an Audi one and you can actually search for charging stations straight away according to charging speed. So that's very, very handy. So I must say the touch screen is not super big, like what you find in the current electric vehicles. But what I really, really love about is that it's angled towards the driver, ensuring that it's a really driver-centric car and a lot of thought was being put into the design of it. Yeah, I think you're right actually. Like it is really angled towards me. I don't have to like stretch really far to reach even the further this corner and by the way this is 10.1 inches and I really didn't know that you know more than 10 inches is still considered not very big these days but never mind I think they can get away with it because you still have these physical switches like look at all these aircon switches listen to that click 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 I love that and you've got things like let's say the driving mode you can just do it right here from the switch but it's not all good news because on the steering wheel you've got these touch sensitive switches but you can also press them so you, I don't know if you sweep or you press or whatever it's just confusing I hate this and they should change it back to physical switches yeah 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 you grumpy old man <laughs> I'm not a grumpy old man I'm a grumpy old Audi expert but, and as an Audi expert, I want to show you something. These are the fingernails of quality. And if you listen to that, right, the cabin is actually quite nice, like an Audi should be, but there are places where they've obviously saved some money. So especially the door. Listen to that. They actually have used quite cheap plastics here. And even the bins, they didn't line them with anything soft. So that'll drive you crazy if you put something there and just moves around like that. So I have to say, as an Audi expert, I have to say it's not quite there but it's nearly there yeah 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 audi expert but as a mom as a lady driver let's talk practicality and functionality okay so there you go okay giant there cup, you go water bottle fine any car can hold that Yeah, so basically i think you know in the driver's cockpit area there's tons of storage space for a lady's necessities. A very thirsty lady, yeah, <laughs> apparently. Okay, I take your point because there's still extra stuff down there you didn't even put on me. So, okay, it is practical, but I do want to find out does it drive like an Audi? Mm, I think I know that look. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Uh, well, I am driving like an Audi driver. That's nonsense, you're using a signal. Uh, well, I said Audi driver, not BMW driver. But you know what? I can't help myself. This car, it's pretty quick. Like, how many horsepower does it have? 285. Okay, 285 and lots of torque, I'm guessing. Yeah, 545. 545 Newton meters. Okay, you know what? That's actually more than a Porsche 911. But okay, it's an electric car, right? So yeah, instant response, lots of torque, and yeah, I'm really having fun. Like <laughs> <laughs> Zero to hundred, I think it's like six point seven seconds, right? Yep. Yeah. So great. Uh, plenty of power, plenty of fun. So does it drive like an Audi? Uh, does it drive like an Audi? Okay, I have to say, not really. And I, I say that because the car doesn't actually like turn very quickly. And the brake pedal is, uh, doesn't give much feel, it's actually a little bit mushy. So it feels like, you know, it's set up more like a family SUV. Like, you know, something like the Audi e-tron GT, that feels like a sports sedan. But I will say that it is pretty comfortable. I mean, it's more or less quite quiet. It's an electric car, right? The suspension is pretty good, the ride quality is pretty calm and to me it feels like a car that's built for long motorway runs and then you can arrive in comfort uh, instead of like blasting down your favourite B road. So now tell me about the important stuff. Uh, important stuff? Um, like is the car easy to handle, is it easy to manoeuvre? It is actually, I have to say it's not a wide car and I really like it for its size because it means that you don't take up a huge amount of space on the road, it's easy to sort of glide down in your lane and stay inside the lines and if you go to like a tight car park or something like that it's actually no problems and it's really easy to handle and i think it's easy to live with day to day so now the question is is it easy to see out of given that it's a sportback coupe suv 
That's an excellent point. And you know, some coupe SUVs, they are just impossible to see out of, right? But you know, I have to say, this isn't one of them. And you know, that extra piece of glass that we talked about at the back, I think it makes a lot of difference to the rearward visibility. You know, I, I don't get the sense that I don't know what's going on behind me and I can't see if there's a traffic policeman behind me. I don't know how they did it because this car is pretty sleek, right? It doesn't have a lot of glass area, but I have to say the visibility is honestly pretty good. The Q4 Sportback comes with a sloping roof line, but does it compromise in headroom or even practicality? I guess not, because you can see a very good <coughs> decent amount me, of space. Me, uh, hey, just move you! Over. <laughs> move over, move over. No offence and sorry to interrupt, but uh, for you, I think every car is spacious. So I'm a grown adult, I'm 1.75 metres tall. So let me do this, okay? And I can tell you, I actually have a decent amount of headroom back here. Legroom is not too bad. Uh, and of course, aircon vents, super important, right? Uh, we have our own aircon temperature control and two USB-C charging ports. So, for me, this is a pass. But what the heck is that? So, with moms, right, we always have our car seats in the car. And if you need some last-minute space for your friends, I guess it's doable. Okay, yeah, it's doable. You can still fit two people in the back here. Maybe it's a little bit tight, but yeah, I take your point. You can fit one child, one petite adult, and, and one big child. Okay, Ash, I'm guessing that this is sport back, right? So there's not much boot space at all. Mm, I think you're gonna be surprised. What the heck? What is all this? So, as a mom, I've got my daily necessities in the boot, like the stroller, maybe a bicycle for... That's not your bicycle, that's your kid's bicycle. Yes, my kid's okay. bicycle for an evening, sporty fun. I've got the director's chairs. Okay, I see a booster. See, yeah. I see alcohol. Every mom, every new mom needs alcohol, right? <laughs> Groceries. Okay, is there a frunk? Um, there isn't, but with 535 litres of boot space, I think we can pretty much get by with what it is. Oh, okay. But, let's say, I mean, you have all your daily necessities here, right? Where are you going to put, let's say, your brand new dresses or, you know, brand new pairs of shoes? So, this boot cover can actually be removed and okay. nicely and neatly stowed away under the boot floor. Ah, okay. So there's, so, there's additional room there? Right. Yep. So, Ash, would you say this passes the mom test? Yes, definitely, with flying colours. In fact, it's an open and shut case. With a storage compartment on the driver's door, it makes it super easy to reach for a water bottle or it can even be a compartment for a foldable umbrella on a rainy day. So, because this is an electric car, you must be wondering about the range. Well, the Sportback e-tron does 482 kilometers in one single charge. And after spending a little bit of time with the car, we think that's a realistic figure. The regular Q4 e-tron, a little bit more boxy, so it does a little bit less range at 466 kilometers. Okay Ash, so let's have some closing thoughts. Now to me, the Q4 is a handsome car, and I think in performance terms, right, it kind of hits a sweet spot. It's pretty quick and it kind of feels like what a good six-cylinder engine used to give you. But it's not crazy fast like some twin-motor EVs, and those have a lot of road tax and so on. It is nice to drive, it's not super agile I would say, but it is comfortable. I think the range is good as well, so as an electric car, to me the Q4 is pretty well executed. For me on the other hand, I think what I really like about the car is that it's practical, it's functional, and even when I got behind the wheels for the first time, it's easy to handle. And most importantly, the space. You know, it's equipped with good space in the front as well as in the rear and you could easily take this car up for a short getaway up north. Or maybe a long getaway. And you mentioned it's got sister cars from Skoda and Volkswagen, right? But don't you think it actually is very Audi? Yeah, I think it does. It screams Audi, it's more premium and definitely Audi. Okay, so million dollar question. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up for me. Yeah, me too. Thumbs up. And that is how you know we are not a married couple, guys. We can actually agree on things. So if you enjoyed our video, do you like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. See, See you, you again. again. Uh, this, this way. Oh, okay. Yes, boss. <laughs>